Tonight on Sports Central, we'll be going over our Pac-12 quarterback rankings and a tier list for every quarterback in the Pac-12 for this upcoming 2020 season. And yeah, as always, these quarterbacks are ranked based off of the experience that they have along with um, the talent that they've got around them just in general, as well as the stats that they've put up in past seasons. So yeah, with that being said, let's look at our first quarterback on this list. It's going to be at number 12. We got um, Colorado's Tyler Little, and of course he's going to be our first D-tier quarterback, and he's pretty much got no, nothing as far as experience goes, and yeah, you'll see a lot of quarterbacks with very little experience at the bottom parts of this list, because we just don't know how good they're going to be, and I mean, for Tyler Little, we've seen him a little bit, but really, I mean, not much at all, I mean, if you look at his 2018 stats, he didn't even play anything, or he didn't play a single snap in 2019, in 2018 he had uh, 55 yards and an interception, as well as four uh, for five as well as passing goes so yeah he's got three total games played in career so basically yeah Tyler Little has very little as far as experience goes and in the time that he has played not very impressive so yeah that certainly was not a very good light to um for us to I mean to go off of going into next season so yeah but he's also not a Russian quarterback which is a bit of a concern for me as well I mean out of, out of most great quarterbacks that you see I don't care whether it's the NFL or college football they're all big time Russian quarterbacks I mean um, if you look at Patrick Mahomes, he's a great example of that. He's a new quarterback, pretty young still, and he's a big time rusher. So, yeah, most quarterbacks are rushing quarterbacks, or most good quarterbacks are rushing quarterbacks. So, uh, for Taylor Little, it's kind of hard to tell right now um, whether or not it, he can be at that level because he's not a rushing quarterback. Being unless let's move on to number 11. It's going to be Washington State's Cameron Cooper. He's never played a college snap either, so he's got pretty much nothing as far as experience goes he's a four-star recruit out of utah we do know that so uh yeah he's a decent quarterback as far as um, recruiting goes and it, the, uh, the quarterback situation is still uncertain in washington state as well so that's why he's going to be a dear d-tier quarterback is because once again we just don't know really squat as to how good he's going to be and yeah i mean if he was a five-star recruit i'd probably put him at the c tier but once again with him being a four-star and he's not even a very high-end uh four-star he's more of a low-end four-star for that matter so yeah, it's kind of tough to tell whether or not Cameron Cooper is going to be good, but he's also not much of a rusher either. So, yeah, that could be also another concern. But once again, uh, it'll be interesting to see how this quarterback situation in Washington State uh, shakes up because over the past couple of years, ever since they lost Gardner Minshew, um, I mean, this quarterback situation in Washington State hasn't been very good. So, yeah, could Cameron Cooper be that guy that they get? And he's going to be great. It's really tough to say, to say right now. Of course, we'll find that out early on in the season. But for now, he's going to land at number 11 on this ranking list. Moving on to number 10, we got Tristan Gebbia from uh, Oregon State. He's a C-tier quarterback, transferred in from Nebraska uh, right before 2019. So he played a decent amount in 2019. I mean, not a whole lot. Uh, I believe he played a few snaps. He had 347 yards along with two touchdowns and one interception. His completion rate was okay. 63.3% is what he had there. And so yeah, he definitely has potential. Lots of upside in Oregon State's Tristan Gebbia. I'd definitely be uh, watching out for this quarterback, I think. I mean, he's definitely got talent. He's got a lot of potential. And from what I've seen um, in research, he's a he's a big guy for work. I mean, he's, he always puts on a huge workload. He's a great uh, worker throughout pretty much everything. So yeah, who knows? I, I could definitely expect him to improve going into 2020. And it does look like right now, I mean, there is a bit of a messy quarterback situation in Oregon State as well. But uh, once again, who knows? He is expected to be your starting quarterback for Oregon State right now. But once again, he's got a ton of upside. Definitely be a, this is a quarterback to be watching out for. But yeah, the talent around him too should be improving a ton for next season. I think Oregon State in general is a team that easily could make it to a bowl game, possibly even further uh, going into 2020. I mean, if you looked at how much they improved over 2019, they definitely have a lot of potential going into 2020. Moving on to number nine, we got another C-tier quarterback, and this is Jacob Sermon. This is the last quarterback on this list that we're pretty uncertain about. He played behind Jacob Easton last season, so we really have not seen a whole lot out of him at all either. He was a high-end four-star recruit, so that's what we do know. It does seem like he's a great quarterback because of him being a four-star, so and that's one reason to watch out for him, but he really has nothing as far as experience goes either. So, And he's also not much of a rusher along with the other quarterbacks on this list, so... Yeah, that's another big of a downside for Jacob Sermon, but of course Jacob Eason really never was a rusher either, and he did pretty well. So, yeah, for Jacob Sermon, it'll be interesting to see how he does, but as far as his stats go, I believe he was only 2 for 3 in his 2019 season. 19 yards is all he put up, so once again, we haven't seen hardly anything out of Jacob Sermon quite yet. So, yeah, these these last four quarterbacks on this list, to 9 through 12, we really have not seen a lot out of at all, so... 
Um, yeah, you'll be interested to see which one of these quarterbacks. I'm sure one of these quarterbacks will be able to be a good top six Pac-12 quarterback next season. We just don't know who it's going to be. Once again, at the bottom of these lists, we just don't know how good these quarterbacks in general are going to be going into 2020 because they don't have hardly any of experience. Moving on to number eight, we got C-tier quarterback Tyler Shaw out of Oregon, and he was the second string quarterback behind great quarterback Justin Herbert last season. Of course, Justin Herbert went very early on uh, in the NFL draft, so he was a great quarterback, and Tyler Shaw is going to have to play really well uh, to fill in the shoes of what Justin Herbert had for uh, Oregon last season. There's a ton of uncertainty for him as well, though. I mean, he's not off this list as far as uncertainty goes. Shao doing well will be a big part of how or, or how well Oregon does, in my opinion, though. I mean, for Oregon, they've got a ton of talent pretty much everywhere else. Just the quarterback position is a bit of a concern for me right now. I mean, if Tyler Shao is not a very good quarterback and they've just got a messy quarterback all season long, um, it's really tough to, for me to believe that Oregon's going to be um, a team that could make it back to the college football playoff or make it to the college football playoff next season. Uh, I mean, I definitely think they'll be good, a big contender to win the Pac-12 in general, but... If you don't have a good quarterback under center, it's really tough for me to believe that they could get anywhere past um, a Pac-12 championship game. So, yeah, nonetheless, in 2019, he did put up some good stats, 144 yards, three touchdowns, and an 80% completion rate while he did play. So, yeah, that certainly is very promising in my opinion. That's kind of what sets him apart from the previous four quarterbacks on this list is because he does have a bit of experience, and when in the time that he has played, it does seem like he's a great quarterback. So, yeah, i definitely be watching out for Tyler Shaw, though. I tell you what, if this quarterback um, is able to play well and he leads Oregon uh, to a great season, it would not surprise me. I mean, Tyler Shaw is definitely a quarterback that I think could come out of absolutely nowhere this upcoming season and lead Oregon to a Pac-12 title once again. I mean, who knows? He was right behind Justin Herbert, so he has been able to learn from him in the past. So watch out for that for sure. But, you know, that moving on to number seven, we're moving on, or we got our next C-tier quarterback, Dorian Thompson-Robinson, uh, DTR from UCLA. He's been a big part of UCLA for the past couple of seasons, no doubt. I mean, he's uh, played quite a bit on this team, especially last season. He was the primary starter for this team in 2019. And, I mean, as you can see below, I mean, there's a ton of improvement from 2018 to 2019. He had a 2% uh, jump in his completion rate, his touchdown interception ratio, did improve a little bit, not a lot. Uh, he still definitely needs to improve that turnover issue that he has there. Of course, uh, he had 12 interceptions last season uh, along with 21 touchdowns. So his touchdown to interception ratio was not very good. But once again, his completion rate did jump up quite a bit. So that's really good uh, for, for UCLA in general. If you look back at 2018, he had 1,300 yards with seven touchdowns and four interceptions, 57% completion rate. And in 2019, he had 2,700 yards. So that's a big jump there. Of course, he didn't play... Uh, completely in 2018 but he did play a decent amount but nonetheless yeah he had 21 touchdowns in 2019 along with 12 interceptions and his completion rate was 59 percent nearly 60 so yeah once again DTR definitely is a quarterback to watch out for going into 2020 um, if the Bruins as a team improve though I tell you what if he's got a good offensive line to work with if he's got a couple of good weapons as far as receivers go I think this quarterback honestly could be a top four quarterback in the Pac-12 next season. Just he does not have the talent around him. I mean, he didn't have much talent around him last season and kind of the same thing for 2018 when he did play. So if he's able to get some good talent in there, I mean, I definitely think that uh, Dorian thompson Robinson could be a top four quarterback in the big in the Pac-12, no doubt on that. So be sure to watch out for him for sure. But yeah, with that, moving on to your number six, we got... Grant Gannell out of Arizona. He's your first B-tier quarterback. He appeared in eight games last season. And I think this guy is definitely a quarterback to watch out for in the Pac-12. He's definitely um, a possible breakout contender. He's very accurate when he was on last season. I mean, if you look at his stats, 1,200 yards, nine touchdowns, only one interception in the time that he played through eight games. Um, and he also had a 65% completion rate, which is one of the best in the Pac-12 from last season. Of course, once again, he did not play the entire season, only just over half of it. But once again, I mean, when you put up a completion rate um, through that time frame, having 65% completion rate, it's very impressive. I mean, so definitely be, be sure to be watching out for this quarterback. I mean, he was behind Khalil Tate for a good chunk of 2019. So you got to... Uh, you got to consider that as well. But he does return most of his offensive line. And considering Arizona was a team that was probably the worst in the Pac-12 last season, I mean, for him to be able to return his entire offensive line, he's got a couple of good weapons in there too. I think, yeah, this is a quarterback to watch out for. I mean, if, when a quarterback has a good offensive line, that gives him a lot more time. He's not under pressure 24-7. And 
Uh, he's able to search out his weapons, and that's going to be huge for Grant Gannell going into 2020, I think. And especially looking at his completion rate, I mean, I'm not, I'm super surprised uh, he didn't get to play nearly as much or even more than Khalil Tate did last season. Um, considering, I mean, Khalil Tate was not a very good quarterback, so yeah, it's kind of tough to tough to understand that. But yeah, Grant Gannell, once again, big quarterback, ought to watch out for him going into 2020. Moving on to number five, we got Jake Bentley out of Utah. And he transferred in from South Carolina after the 2019 season. I believe that was in early December when he transferred in. And he has played at a high level before. I mean, if you look at his stats, he's actually played, uh, he played in the 2016 season. So this is going to be his fifth season here. Of course, he was able to redshirt his 2019 season uh, because he hardly played at all. So it's good that he's able to have another season. But yeah, of course, he had pretty good 2017 and 2018 seasons. In 2017, he put up nearly 2,800 yards with 18 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. So his touchdown and interception ratio was not very good. Uh, his completion rate wasn't bad, though. And then in 2018, he actually put up a quite a decent season, 3,100 yards with 27 touchdowns and 14 interceptions for South Carolina. Also had a 62% completion rate there, too. So, yeah, he definitely has a ton to improve on. And the reason why I'm kind of concerned about Jake Bentley is because he hasn't played uh, he, isn't, he didn't really play in 2019 at all. So, uh, yeah, with that, I mean, going into 2020, is the experience going to be um, kind of lacking for him? It's really tough to say right now. But, I mean, at Utah, I mean, definitely being in an easier conference, you'd, can, you'd think that Jake Bentley would have a much better season at Utah than he did during his three or so seasons at South Carolina. But it's really tough to say right now. I think Jake Bentley definitely has potential. I mean, if you've seen, if you saw, I mean, looking at his stats, he played at a pretty high level, especially in 2018. He put up some pretty good stats, over 3,000 yards, and that's tough to do in a SEC conference that is always uh, very stellar. So you got to watch out for that. But yeah, Jake Bentley definitely is a quarterback that I think could be an A-tier quarterback if his Utah team was able to cooperate with him. So yeah, watch out for that for sure. Jake Bentley is a quarterback to watch out for in the Pac-12 this upcoming season. Moving on to number four, we got. Another B-tier quarterback, Davis Mills, out of Stanford. And, of course, he's been injury-prone before over the past couple of seasons. So you got to watch out for that. But he definitely could be an A-tier quarterback if he, if he can stay healthy. I mean, he's got a ton of upside. Looking at his 2019 stats and the time that he did play, 1,900 yards, 11 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. He also had a 66% completion rate if you round it up. So, yeah, Davis Mills was definitely a quarterback. Uh, that was one of the best in the Pac-12 when he did play. Of course, he's right behind KJ Costello for... A uh, good chunk of the season, but he did. He was very accurate in the time that he did play last season. So you got to watch out for that once again. Uh, he's kind of similar um, to our previous quarterback in that factor that um, he was very accurate. And but yeah, with that, I mean Davis Mills once again being in Stanford, being a, in a team that doesn't have a whole lot of talent right now, you do have to you do have to consider that. But I think for Stanford, I mean they are returning a decent amount of talent going into 2020. So I think Davis Mills definitely is going to be in a good offense and a good team going into 2020. Watch out for that. Moving on to number three, we got Chase Garbers out of Cal. He was 7-0 through the seven games he started last season. And this quarterback, I mean, no one's really talking about him at all. I haven't heard Chase Garbers' name in really any media over the past few weeks. Um, but you got to consider, I mean, yeah, doing some research, he was 7-0 through the seven games he started last season. That is a very impressive stat. I mean, if you remember back last season, they were actually ranked a decent spot. I think they were a top 15, top 16 team at one point last season. And once he got injured, though, they were one and five uh, throughout the rest of the season. So, yeah, Chase Garbers was a great player, a great quarterback in the time that he did play. And he's considering how young he is, too, he's got a ton of potential if he can stay healthy. Watch out for him for sure. 2018 stats 1,500 yards, 14 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. Also had a 61% completion rate. And in 2019, he had right around 1,800 yards with 14 touchdowns and three interceptions, near a 61% completion rate there as well. So, yeah, he did improve a ton on the interceptions going into 2019. Of course, he only threw up three interceptions last season, of course. Uh, he did play in the easier part of the season. He didn't get to play um, all of his conference games by any means, but he still put up a really good touchdown interception ratio, 14 to three. Uh, very impressive. He does need to improve his accuracy, though, if he will be an eight-year quarterback. Of course, he only put up a 61% completion rate over the past couple of seasons. So, yeah, if he's able to improve that a couple percent at least, get that up to a 64, 65% next season, I think Chase Garbers definitely could be one of, or if not the best, uh, quarterback in the Pac-12, especially if he can stay healthy. Moving on to number two, we got our first A-tier quarterback, Jaden Daniels. And I went back and forth between our top two quarterbacks a ton. I mean, you got a ton of bright points for both of these top quarterbacks. But Jaden Daniels, 
Very, very impressive. He was a true freshman last season. He handled pressure so well. Of course, uh, Arizona State was a team that knocked off uh, Oregon towards the end of last season. They were the one that completely destroyed Oregon's playoff hopes. So yeah, Jaden Daniels, he does really well under pressure for sure. Uh, and he could easily be the best quarterback in the Pac-12 next season. Like if you told me that Jaden Daniels would be uh, your best quarterback in the Pac-12 next season, I would not be surprised hardly at all. I mean, looking at his stats, 2,900 yards, 17 touchdowns, two interceptions last season, along with a 60.7% completion rate. So, yeah, his completion rate is not very good. That is something that he definitely has to improve. But if he can get that up a couple percents, I, I definitely think he could He could definitely be a great quarterback. He could do a lot of damage in the Pac-12 next season if he's able to do that. So, yeah, once again, 60.7% completion rate is what he had. His touchdown interception ratio, though, was very good. 17 to 2 is what he had. Only two interceptions for the entire season. And uh, yeah, that is clear evidence that he handles himself really well under pressure. And considering he was able to do that as a true freshman, be sure you're watching out for Jaden Daniels moving into 2020. And your number one, not much of a surprise here, I'm sure, kid on Slovis uh, from USC. And he's got two great receivers to work with. He's got St. Brown and Bonds, two receivers that nearly put up a thousand yards of offense over the past couple of seasons. And no one's talking about him at all. I have not heard this guy's name in any media hold the all over this offseason and it is really surprising me i mean he's a dark horse heisman contender is what i'm saying about him i think he definitely i mean considering how young he is still too i mean yeah you gotta really watch out for him he uh especially i mean for him he put up three thirty five hundred yards with 30 touchdowns and nine interceptions last season his completion rate was basically i think he's the third best in the fbs behind joe burrow and Tyler Huntley, of course, Tyler Huntley was from Utah. Joe Burrow uh, being the first round overall draft pick uh, from LSU. And yeah, he was able to put up a 72% completion rate last season. Very, very impressive, extremely accurate. He did throw up nine interceptions, so he does need to improve that a bit um, if he will be on that elite tier list. But yeah, he was very, very good last season. Once again, 3,500 yards, 71% completion rate. Yeah, this is the quarterback to watch out for. And once again, no one's even talking about him, which is a huge surprise for me. I mean, when I was going through his stats, I was so surprised because I hardly have even heard this guy's name before. And to see those stats coming out of him, very, very impressive. So be sure to be watching out uh, for Slovis going into 2020. So with that being said, that about wraps up our Pac-12 quarterback rankings for the 2020 season. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to slap a like on it. Subscribe as well. Really helps out the channel, and I'd really appreciate that a ton. But yeah, once again, thank you all for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for more from All Sports Central. Let me know your thoughts once again, though, in the comments below on this list. If you disagree with anything, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. But yeah, once again, thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for more from All Sports Central again, and I will see you all later.